Hey guys, Dimitris here. This video is all about productivity utilities and how to make your life easier in front of the computer. These are always 10 specific utilities, but if you're a PC user and you have some alternatives in mind, feel free to mention them in the comments below. At the end of the video, I will also mention some OS 10 specific tips and tricks, so make sure to stay for those as well. In the description below, you will also find all the links for the utilities mentioned here. A big portion of a user's time is spent doing repetitive tasks, like moving files around, deleting files, and so on and so forth. Understandably, some users can't be bothered maintaining their machine, resulting in cluttered hard drives and desktops. This is where Hazel shines. Hazel is a great automation tool doing all the boring and repetitive things for you. You might think that it involves a lot of programming, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. Hazel does its magic through actions performed on folders. The actions are described through very simple rules. You just add as many commands as needed in order to perform your task. Since I perform different tasks on my work computer and my home computer, I have different Hazel rules set up for these two. For example, at work, and this is a common problem with a lot of other users, I deal with a lot of files. And of course the most convenient place to store them is the desktop. You can set up Hazel to clean up your desktop automatically. I'll give you an example with the way I've set up my desktop. I have specific rules set up for different file types. But the general rule for all files is this. If after two days I haven't taken any action, Hazel will start moving files around or even delete files. So after two days, any images on the desktop will be moved to a folder named images. There, later on, I can go around and manually select which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to delete. The same goes for folders and movies. The downloads folder, which is another place where things tend to pile up, I have some slightly different rules. If after a day I haven't taken any action, Hazel automatically moves the files to the trash. But if the file is labeled with gray, then no matter how old the file is, it will stay there. So let's see how that works. Here, I have a file labeled as gray. I will get rid of the label, and Hazel automatically moves it to the trash. It's dead simple. Another rule I've set up at work is for screenshots. I take a lot of screenshots during the day, so before Hazel, I ended up with a desktop full of images. I had to stop what I was doing, start cleaning things up, and then continue with my work. And if you take into account the fact that I'm using a Tomb Monitor setup, the file number gets quite high really fast. I don't use the second monitor usually for screenshots, so I always ended up manually deleting the second image. To solve all this mess, I created a Hazel rule, which moves all screenshots to a folder on my desktop named Screenshots, and automatically moves the screenshot from the second screen to the trash. So let's test and see how that works. I take a screenshot, and now Hazel should take care of the rest. Awesome! <laughs> As you can see from this short overview, you can do whatever you can imagine with Hazel. For example, you can set up a weekly archival of a specific folder or folders that also move the archive to a backup storage device. You can also automatically rename files that have a specific naming convention and move them to a specific folder. Great for bank account statements, for example. Whatever you can think of, chances are you can do it. My next favorite utility is this little guy here. With the default folder X, you have a file saving slash file management system on steroids. It basically adds a surrounding area to your open and save dialogs with a lot of extra options. The feature I use all the time is the ability to save a file on a window that is open on your desktop. This is a common scenario for everyone working with lots of programs. You work on a project on one program, let's say Photoshop, and then you want to import that into Illustrator. The location Illustrator shows you though on the import dialog might be from another project. So you have to manually find the folder the project is on, import the file, etc. etc. You get the idea. Imagine doing that multiple times a day and you just go nuts. With the default folder X, you don't have to manually navigate to that specific folder. If it's open on the finder, you can just hover outside the open or save dialog and uh, you will go straight to that folder of that window. If you have multiple windows, you will see multiple highlights. All you need to do then is just click on the window you want. Your open or save dialog is now automatically set on that folder. It's that simple, and most importantly, that fast. 
I don't even know how many times a day I use this. But that's not all a default folder can do. You have a fully functional finder inside the dialog. That means adding tags to your files, labeling your files, renaming folders, and deleting files. You can also set up folders you access frequently on the right side of the dialog, along with recently visited folders. That is pure awesomeness. So that's default folder X. The next one is called uh, copy and paste. You can find it in the App Store, and its task is really, really simple. It just stores everything you copy. And the guys developing it uh, went out of their way to add tons of features. So let's see how it works. Let's uh, copy some stuff. I'll copy this part here, this part here, and this part here as well. If I didn't have copy and paste, I would only be able to paste the last thing copied. But with this little utility, I can just hold Command Shift V and pick from the multiple clipboards. I can either click on it, but I can also use the keyboard. So as you can see here, there are some numbers on the right. If uh, I press the 2, I will get that portion of the text, and so on and so forth. This is really good. The even better thing is that you can also store some of your clippings. These are stored permanently, and you can find them in your favorites list. So with a shortcut, I can just switch to my favorites, and then follow the same process to paste. You can even have multiple lists. I'm not using that at the moment, but I can see how powerful that can be for people working in support or people writing a lot of standardized text. It also works amazingly well with uh, Sierra's copy and paste from all your iCloud synced devices. So let's test this out. Here on my iPad, I will copy this bit of text here, and let's see what will happen. <laughs> awesome. You begin to see how ridiculously powerful this can be. One thing to notice though, there's a slight conflict unfortunately when using Adobe's Illustrator. Sometimes when you copy an object, it will paste it as a piece of gibberish text, but that can easily be solved by just momentarily pausing the utility and using the normal clipboard. Either way, this is a great time saver worth checking out. Let's now move to OS 10 specific workflows. You can get quite a lot of things done with just the vanilla OS, as long as you know some handy little things. The first thing I would like to mention, and something that escapes a lot of users, is the fact that you can navigate dialogs with your keyboard. To do that, you need to enable one option in System Preferences. You need to go to Keyboard, and then Shortcuts, and enable All Controls option. Once enabled, you hold Tab to switch between options, and then Space to confirm the highlighted option. So simple, but so useful. You can also navigate the menus with the keyboard. To do that, you just hit Ctrl and F2, and you will notice the highlight on the Apple key. Then, just by using the arrow keys, you can move around the menus. With the Enter key, you can select the command option you want to execute. Now, let's uh, move on to screenshots. You probably know the classic commands. Command Shift 3 takes a screenshot of the screen. Command Shift 4 screen grabs a portion of your screen. What is really helpful though, is the fact that you can also measure things. This is especially useful for designers. When in this mode, the pointer transforms into a hairline, showing you the dimensions of the area you're grabbing. If you're done measuring, you can just hit escape and avoid saving the area as an image. Where things get nicer though, are the extra keys you can hold while performing the screenshots. For example, if you hit Command Shift and 4, and then space, you can just screen grab a specific window. It even saves it with its underlying drop shadow. The same commands with control added save the images onto the clipboard instead of a file. But it doesn't end here. With Command Shift 4, you can also hold down space, which moves around the area you've drawn. By holding Option, you resize the area window from its center. And by holding Shift, you resize only one axis, while the other one remains locked. Now another helpful little utility that strangely enough not a lot of people know, is the Digital Color Meter, and you can find it in your Utilities folder. 
Granted, it will only appeal to designers, but if you are one, you will love it. With this little guy, you can read the RGB values of any area on your screen. You don't have to save the image, open it up in Photoshop and read its values. You just hover over with your mouse, read the values, and you're done. It can also give you the values on other formats, but RGB is mainly what I use it for. The last thing I want to mention is a great way to find commands and menus. This works with almost all apps, and it can save you a lot of time hunting down a command you don't know exactly where it is. All you need to do is go to the help menu and start typing the command name. The system will find it and will highlight exactly the menu where it's located. Great! This is just a small selection of cool and neat little things you can do with uh, third-party utilities and a vanilla version of OS X. If you have a cool tip that is not mentioned here, make sure to mention it in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Talk soon!